Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Hawkins Simmer and today we are doing another episode of my Let's Build a Cape Cod Mansion. Yay! We're gonna jump in today. The problem is is that I did have to film this part that I'm about to do about 78 times. So I have given up more or less and as you can see here, the build has been painted and um, the windows have been placed. Listen, I know you. You're watching this and you can do this. If you're actually trying to follow along or get tips or something, it's just paint, it's just paint, baby. I just picked blue because it seemed the most Cape Cod-like and uh, the windows, I used a mixture of these shuttered ones and some of these, I think from University, I thought were really cute on the rotunda. These are cats and dogs, right? And these are too. So uh, I used a mixture, try to use a mixture of windows usually. I think that gives a little bit more interest. I gave the roof this orange color shingle and uh, we're rolling with it, okay? We're doing our best here. So today we're gonna start focusing on the terrain paint and moving the terrain around. It's probably gonna take a while. It did the last two times I filmed it. Also, I just got a Lord Farquaad haircut today, so please just bear with me. I am absolutely at my wit's end. But we're gonna jump right in. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna start working with some terrain tools. If you're like me, you're still pretty new to using the terrain tools, but we are gonna do this today. It's gonna be so fine. So basically the reason being is that these are all garages and as you can see, your cars just can't pop those two extra feet into the garage. So we need to bump up where the terrain meets flush at the bottom of the garage doors but we need to leave it down to have some stairs in the front of the house. So the way we do that is we're just gonna go very slowly to pull it up. That kind of gives us a good place to start. And then we'll use this tool, which puts this little square at the height where it's at, and then it'll pull the rest of the terrain up beside it so that it's flush. And I just so happened to pick, I think the right height is what it looks like. But we'll zoom in in a minute and check it out for sure. Sometimes for this, this might be easier with the square tool. Okay, so as you can see, at this point, all of the terrain is level where we will be putting garage doors. So from here, what you wanna do is you wanna start putting this little square kind of in the middle of this hill that's obviously a very sharp incline again. So we want to just start kind of giving us room to build out from here because we want it to slope down kind of naturally. And the thing with terrain tools is it's a lot of back and forth, it's a lot of shading, so it'll just take a little bit of practice and a little bit of, I mean a lot of back and forth, that's like no joke. So right here you can kind of tell we have a stair step going on. This will just make smoothing the terrain paint a little easier. So we'll grab the smoothing tool and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump this down, the speed, and then right here we're going to bump this down even though it's already pretty low and it's gonna help us to very slowly kind of move the terrain and make it smoother. So even when you do it slowly, it kind of happens really quickly. And those are with the settings as low as they will go. And then you have to kind of pull it to the side to really see where it's at. It's still pretty lumpy, but it's not bad. And then we'll take this and smooth it right here one more time. And again, you just pull it down to take a look. That's honestly not bad. It's a little steep right there. We might want to go in and fix that a little bit, but that's okay. So then we'll go back in with the flattened terrain paint and we'll kind of get right on this edge to bump that up a little bit. So then again, we'll just pull this camera down one more time and kind of get a feel for it. And to me, this is pretty good. This is about as good as it'll realistically get. You can take this smoother tool one more time, make sure your settings are as low as they'll go. And then we'll just very gently, very gently go like so. Then maybe right here, we'll do a little bit of smoothing. So I think that side is done. I know you can't tell yet because we haven't done the terrain paint yet, but there's also going to be a way into this garage area from here. It will kind of be like a courtyard kind of driveway. So we'll just do something really similar where we use the flattened terrain tool with the square and we'll kind of create these stair steps down. And we'll pull this one. So we've kind of got that stair step thing going. We want to make sure that up here, everything stays the same. This one will be a much sharper incline as well. 
but still you can see where we've got those stair steps now and then we'll just take our smoothing tool a little bit of a larger tool and we'll go kind of right on the edges right there take our camera angle it this way actually I feel like that's already really good and I don't want to mess it up so I might leave it like that the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tool again gonna use the square and we're just gonna clean this up right at the top and you know the good news is is we don't have cars in the Sims, so it really doesn't matter that this is perfect by any means it just needs to be kind of believable I guess so that looks pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do right now is we are going to create our garage doors. There's a variety of ways to do this. Sometimes I think the best way is to use just a regular column and you put it the outside of the wall and you create a big garage. So this method allows you to customize a little bit because there's different doors that kind of resemble garage doors that you can use, but those are the size that they are and you can't size them down. But with these, it's important to remember that columns do not place on the half tile, so you are limited to doing everything on the exact tile. So you can see here, I made these two both have double doors, and then this one will be one big door. So the next step is to take this window, is what I usually use, but I usually take this window and I'll place it right here and just go all the way across so that it looks like there are windows in the garage door. And you'll just do the same for all the others as well. So now we need them to have the actual panels that make up a garage door. So you're just going to want to choose this wide, or I like to choose rather, this wide, lightest color of siding. And then you pull it across like so. Obviously this isn't a perfect method, but I think it definitely gets the point that we're trying to make. So the final steps are going inside of the garages and placing the paint and the columns in the exact same area. Now that we've got the paint, I will just duplicate some of these columns. And if you don't know, columns are kind of tricky nowadays. Uh, to place more than one of them, you just need to hold down the shift key and that'll allow you to place them. All right, so those are our garage doors. And then what we're gonna do now is just some terrain paint. I always like to map my terrain paint out with the darkest color. That makes it look like there's a little bit of a shadow all the way around it. Use this muddy mud and then I just go to town. So in here, this is a driveway, so we obviously need it to go along the entire driveway. And then it's gonna come down here and kind of wrap around to the front. So I'll take a circular tool, still pretty large. Oop, not quite that big. We'll wrap it around the front of the house, and kind of down like this. And we can go back and clean all of this up later. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're just trying to get a general idea with this terrain paint. So then from the reference pictures in the front of the house, there is one big circular drive. So I think it's going to look something like this. Cool. And we'll make this small again. And this driveway kind of goes like that. So this kind of got a little wonky out to the side, so we'll just take the eraser tool and kind of shave it off. Shave off this little bump. Shave off just a little bit more. So it gets a little narrow right in here, so I think I'll just kind of bloop. Sometimes those small adjustments can really do a lot. Okay, so this is a general outline for the driveway. This is just the driveway. There will be so much terrain paint. I'm gonna have to do it in sections and then save a lot because the game still has that awful glitch where it will just destroy all of the terrain paint you've spent hours on, the disrespect. So now we just need to pick a driveway color, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna soften it just a little bit. That'll give us a little bit more control about how quickly it fills in that whole circle because we wanna make sure that we leave some of this darker color on the outside. So that's pretty good. And I would recommend doing short strokes and that way if you do mess up it'll be easier to just kind of hit undo if you do a whole big section all at once and then you have to hit undo that's kind of a pain so what we'll do on this big circle we just wanted to make sure we got that general kind of outline and we'll take this tool a smaller circle and we'll go in and we'll get really close to that edge so this is really time consuming again it's a lot about just taking little strokes and shaving off just a little bit so I think that circle area is pretty good for now. Got to do the walkway. It's easy fix though. Bloop. 
And we'll probably end up filling all this up with landscaping. So like I said, this really isn't important. If this is like not important to you and your builds, like you do not have to do this. And I wouldn't recommend unless you're like really in love with the look of it or you're a glutton for pain or something. I am gonna bump up the speed of the color just because I'm gonna stay pretty far away from the edges right now. I'm just trying to get the bulk of it and then I'll go back and I'll do some of the finer details. Now that we're in a bigger area, we'll just bump up the brush size. So now that the main stuff is filled in, we've just got kind of a gross edge here. That's when we'll bump down our sensitivity and start filling in those edges. So like I said, we just want a hint of a shadow on the outside. We don't actually want like a big dirt path all the way across. And also like zooming in and out kind of puts things into perspective as well. So you can kind of see this is the shadow we have around here. That's kind of, we want to keep that consistency basically. Come back on this side and just chipping away at that dark edge, trying to soften it up a little bit. Okay, so I think this is what we're working with at this point. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna start landscaping. And we'll play with terrain paint again many times, but first we'll start laying out exactly where we want our flowers and all that good stuff. Go down to this main area and we will try to place a fountain. This one is from my wedding stories, but if you don't have that pack, any fountain will do probably just roughly this size. All right, so I think that's dead center and then I think I like this one with the white and pink colors just to give it, you know, a little bit of pizzazz. And then we're not doing a cats and dogs build only, but I always for landscaping try to feature all of the landscaping from that world. It makes it blend in a little bit better and not seem so ridiculously out of place. So I will filter by cats and dogs and base game and start pulling a few things out. So in other videos, I've definitely talked about how I tend to go about landscaping and that's typically picking like two or three predominantly green things and then kind of deciding on a color scheme. I don't tend to do a lot of pinks and purples in my real life. Those aren't my favorite color of flowers. I tend to like blue flowers and yellow and orange flowers the best. And because the house is blue, I feel like we should steer clear of blue. We'll probably do a lot of white and some yellow and then maybe some pinks in there. But for green stuff, especially in this world, I know we're gonna pull out the hostas. I love, love, love hostas in the game and in real life. So we'll pull that. I love using these cattails and then maybe this green fern. So those are kind of our green things. And then we should do some hydrangeas. Ooh, I know I want these flowers. Pull out these white ones too. I think I might do something with those. I like those yellow ones. Okay, and then I think we'll use these white hydrangeas. So I think these are our colors, these red, whites, and yellows. Really like those, and then this is our green stuff. So what we're gonna do is, I know that your sims can sit around this, but um, I think it would look better <laughs> with some landscaping. So we're gonna start landscaping around the fountain. There's also a grass from Island Living that I think I wanna use. Yeah, this stuff, but I think I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm gonna size this down one, and then I'll hold Alt-Shift to kind of place it all the way around the fountain. So then I'm just gonna kinda, again, I'm gonna hold Alt and kinda move these around, get them out a little bit more so they're showing. Hold Alt and you can rotate them freely and that way you can get a little bit more coverage out of each one. And it doesn't need to be like perfectly circular all the way around. We just want a little bit poking out everywhere. So then we'll go back into terrain paint. I know you're shocked. We'll take this darkest color again. We'll make one big circle and then just kind of give it a click and a click and a click. And then when you lower it, there's just a little bit of shadow underneath all of those bushes. Another thing that I like to do is take some of these hedgerows. There's a whole bunch to choose from. I typically choose them out of debug because I end up placing quite a few of them. And then those are good kind of back boards or like backgrounds to the rest of your landscaping. So you put one back here and then you can kind of start filling in all this big stuff. 
And again, you just hold down Alt Shift. I always freely place all of my plants like this. I think that's the easiest way to do it. And I typically will put down like five or six of the same thing. And then when I get a whole bunch of them placed, I typically go back in and get you know, a little bit more specific, a little bit more precise on how I actually want things placed. So I know I'm gonna landscape all through here as well. So again, I'll just shift click and place a whole bunch of those. So then we'll place this fern out here as well. You wanna make sure you grab stuff of varying sizes. You don't want everything to look the same height. So now we've got a general kind of, here's some stuff. It's not very cute right now, but it will be, trust me. So I know this probably seems like very unorganized and a lot of back and forth, and maybe it is, but to me, I need to have all of the elements kind of around to decide how I want everything to work. So now I'm gonna go into the trees. This is probably my favorite tree in the whole game. It's the wetland cypress tree. And these are nice because they're super skinny. So you can fit them in to these corners and they give a lot more depth and dynamic, I think, to your landscaping. So then we'll take one of these and we'll pop it right in this corner. And then you use the left bracket key to size it down. I think two of them always look a little nicer together. So then again, we're just gonna look around at all these trees on the outskirts and we'll go in and grab a whole bunch of those and place those around. So we've got a lot of these maples. And again, I think it's best to place a couple of them at a time, size some of them down, get yourself a good variation of all of your trees. Hit your bracket key and size it down again. We don't wanna totally block the house. We just want it to feel really blended into the area. So I try to set things kind of off to the side. And especially this, we worked so hard on this earlier. Like we don't wanna hide that. We wanna make sure that we can see all of that. You just don't want it to feel like you plopped a brand new house right in the middle of this open field. You want it to feel built into the environment. And you can see all of this is very full. There there's also some like Christmas tree type things. I don't know why I can't think of what those are actually called, but you know the ones. We're gonna copy one of these and put it maybe like right here. We're gonna get rid of this or we're gonna at least move it. You don't want your landscaping like this area and this area are gonna be so full that I think over here, this is just really difficult to landscape. So we're going to take this hedge that we got earlier. We're just gonna wrap this around the rotunda. Smush that back in there. Again, you're gonna wanna hold Alt because for whatever reason, these really don't go right up next to the foundation. So like over here, it's kind of like pulled away from it. Yeah, we don't want that. We want it to be more flush. Then this cattail just kind of became, you know, superfluous. We'll back that one up as well. Make sure you hold down Shift. And place this one right here. That one will go right in there. And with a big house like this, I always picture these people being a little bit more prim and proper. They'd be really into just having some hedges. And this is kind of an awkward little space. So the way that I typically go about making that seem less awkward <laughs> is by going back into the shrubs and grabbing some of these kind of cone shaped ones. Okay, I don't love the color of those. I really wish they were the same color, or at least a little bit more similar to these, but it is what it is. So for right now, I feel like this is kind of all we're gonna do on this side of the build. We'll go back through and put some terrain paint underneath to give it some shadows. But that's kind of it. Okay, so now we're gonna go into this little wall sculptures thing, and we're gonna pull out some more debug stuff. Again, I find this, the, there are other ways to do it you can scroll through the debug catalog if you want to i find the best way the easiest way for me to do this is using the better build by mod from twisted mexi i absolutely adore this mod i use it all the time in every single build it literally organizes all the debug stuff it makes it super easy to find so i'm just going to pull out this debug fence from cats and dogs and these are kind of tricky. They move on one corner instead of like center. And we'll just take another one and kind of go like that. And we'll move them together. And then they've got this little pillar and we'll just stick that right in the middle. Hit shift, place it on all three sides. Cute. Okay, I think I'm gonna put another one right here. Again, you just kind of adjust them slowly. When you take the little pillars, hit shift. So we're going to go into the landscaping again and pull out some rocks. 
So that's kind of big. Maybe we'll use this one down here since this one kind of has a little bit more room to play with. I'd like to think that these rock, like one of these rocks maybe has like whoever lives here has their like last name on it maybe. Okay, I think I do like this rock the best, but maybe we'll spin it around so it doesn't seem like the exact same rock. And then those two rocks can just be like on the other side of the fence. Just takes a little adjusting. And maybe, maybe we just move the whole fence back a little. Move this rock. Okay, cute. So then what we'll do is we will start landscaping around these rocks. So again, we're going to use our bracket key to size it down, place one over here and maybe this one right there. And then I always like to pull in more green stuff. We'll keep this stuff kind of simple in here. So we'll take that one and then maybe a hosta. Okay, and again, we'll come back through and do some terrain paint all around that. So again, we'll just take some of these red flowers from Island Living, we will size them down, and we will throw them right in here under this rock. Take another cattail, and then maybe this fern. Place that right there. I don't think we have a mailbox, so that's fun. So we'll need to get one of those. Grab this cats and dogs one, because it'll kind of match all of our columns on the porch. And we'll put this bad boy right here. Cute. Again, I know this all looks like a mess, but it will come together. You just have to trust the process. I say that a lot, but it's the truth. So we'll grab a couple more of these cypress trees. And then what we did over here, we'll probably go ahead and do something really similar on this side because it's just a lot of the same trees. I also really love this oak tree. It's gigantic. I love using it to fill up spaces. So we'll probably put that right there. Okay, I think I like it like that. I also really enjoy these trees, these beech trees. Those are pretty. I don't think we're gonna use these. So something that I wasn't gonna do, but now I feel like I really wanna do it is we're gonna take these little flowers. We're gonna hit shift and alt and we are going to place 300 of them around the circle drive. Make sure you rotate it every once in a while so that not every single flower looks the exact same. We'll just kind of go in and shape it up a little bit. But I also know that I want a walking path this way. So I'll make an opening right there. That's probably big enough. And then I think I'm gonna put a swing set over here. So I'll open that up as well. Because this is all already gonna be landscaping, I'm not going to edge it all the way around here, but I will put some on the outside of this drive. Move that tree out of the way and then we'll just kind of straighten this up. It's a little wobbly. Cool, put this tree back. It's always important to save your game. Okay, so now that we've got that all mapped out, let's go back into this area and start kind of more fine tuning. We're gonna grab this guy again, just to add some height on these blank walls. I always feel like that's really helpful. Let me put one over there as well. And we'll play with that in a bit. And I have a tendency to sort of over landscape a little bit. You know, we, we all have our faults and mine is over landscaping for sure. So I just tend to really like that cottage core style of like very full landscaping. And I truly do think that it's beautifully done that way, but in real life, most people's landscaping is not as full as I tend to do in The Sims. Put this guy up here, grab another one of these. So I know that looks pretty full, honestly, more full than I had originally intended, but I do like the way that it looks right now. Believe it or not, a lot of times my landscaping is even more full than that. So then we're just gonna take that darkest terrain paint again, probably smaller circles so that we can have a little bit more control and we'll fill it in. I like to fill this in and make it look like mulch. Some people do it just for the shadow, but for me in a garden bed, you're gonna be having mulch or rock or something in that garden bed. So that's kind of how I go about doing it. If it's random plants kind of on the outskirts of your yard, then yeah, I try to make it so that it's just a little bit of a shadow, but in here, I want it to look like it's full of mulch or rock. So then for me, once you're done with a garden bed, I feel like the best way to kind of finish it off is to go in to the rocks area and 
scroll all the way down to these base game rocks and you just kind of place a few here and there. And I always feel like that really just kind of finishes it off pretty well. Anywhere you kind of have a little blank space and try not to use the same rock over and over and over again. So I'm looking at this right now and this little spot right here feels kind of empty, but I don't want to put another one of these. So I'll probably go in and try to find a bird bath. And to be honest, I never know where that is. So I usually just type in bird and then I grab one of these right here, but I don't I also like these. Ooh, maybe we'll do this like kind of coppery white. Throw a white one right there. So that adds a little bit of height and fills up that space without just like throwing another bush in there. And then we'll use the same formula all the way around the rest of the build. And you'll wanna look at everything from like a few different angles. I always find that that's really helpful to kind of get your bearings. Like maybe from up top, this looks really good, but you wanna make sure that it looks good when you're on the ground too, because a lot of times you're playing it from that angle anyway. And I always try to put tall stuff around the back and then your smaller things kind of out in front. A little bit too and then we can always go back and use some of this too to kind of fill in i especially like to use big stuff like this around the bases of trees i always feel like that kind of i don't know makes it look like oh you didn't just plop a tree right down right here and we'll go in like this one isn't really in the landscaping so i'll just make it look like there's some shadow underneath it like there's probably still some mulch there but it's not going to be as precise as the actual flower beds over here so because we did the other ones together i just kind of quickly filled this one in i'm trying to control myself and not make it too too full but that is proving difficult okay great so that's stupid amounts of full but it's okay i'm fine with it so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place some grassy stuff around the base of the trees that's always kind of how i go about doing it so then we'll kind of just get around the base of the tree and i might place something like that and some grassy stuff just so that it's not sitting right out in the open and then we'll probably go back and we will do some terrain paint over there and over here, I think I'm gonna put like a bench maybe. Maybe we'll remove a few of these to create like a walkway over here in front of this bench. Use this base game one. I guess I always just think like it'd be real peaceful to like sit under this tree. Ooh, this is a good item. I love all of these rocks that we can kind of place all at once and that way again, your build just starts to blend in with the world around it instead of seeming like totally random. Just kind of have to get a good, kind of rotate it around so that you're not, you know, putting rocks where you've already got some trees and stuff. So that looks pretty good. I'm sure that seems a little random, but I really think that it's going to be good. And then we might pull some other rocks to just sort of fill it in so that it doesn't seem totally random. I like these. These are also from Get Together. And then I will copy some of this grass over here, put a bunch of it around the base of this tree. We'll just put a bunch of it over there. And we'll grab some of these other little bits of grass and we'll place those around as well. Oh yeah, we're gonna take some of this fencing and we just want it to sort of look like it does around the world where there's just a lot of random fencing in of some landscaping. Then we'll kind of go back in and clean this up a little bit. Maybe we'll angle this one just so that it doesn't look like so perfect. Then we want to go in with this post and put that in between each one. So then we'll put another one over here. We just need to make sure that it all makes sense with the rocks. So it's like maybe one right there. And then we'll go back in with our posts. I'll try to see if I can get one to go like across here. Might have to adjust a few things. Yep, so I'm just gonna pull all of these in just a little bit. And we'll take these pale, low-lying yellow flowers and we'll just kind of line it all up across this fence. And again, this area really isn't meant to be prim and proper landscaping, as I'm sure you're picking up on at this point. It's really just meant to kind of blend it into its surroundings and look natural and that this is just part of their property that they don't lay mow maybe around some of these larger rocks but they don't really like you know get deep in there i guess so then we'll go back into the rocks 
and we will pull a few rocks down probably a couple of the same ones that we used before and we'll just be sure to kind of rotate them honestly you can get a lot of good variation if you just rotate the rocks like now these two look like totally different rocks even though they're the same rock and then i always like to use the bigger rocks to kind of frame stuff in around the corners and then maybe we'll make like a little walking path through here or something. So this is something I do all the time. I make flagstone paths with these flat rocks. I like to size them up a little bit to just kind of add a little bit more variation and it makes it go quite a bit faster if they're all quite a bit larger. So what I do is the same thing with landscaping. I throw a few of them down and then I go back in later and kind of fine tune. What if we put a telescope back here and then this like path doesn't seem totally random, but it's just another kind of skill building item that you can put out here and then this doesn't seem so entirely random. So I'll use this base game one just to, you know, I know a lot of people probably still don't have the werewolves pack and if I use the base game one, that makes this build just like ever so slightly more accessible. So then what we'll do is we will go back in with terrain paint. I'm sure you're surprised. So that when we're going in with the terrain paint in here, this really is mostly for shadow. I mean, around the rocks, there might be some mud and stuff. I just think that darkening around it makes it look just not so inorganic. Unorganic? It looks more organic when you put some terrain paint down. And again, you just wanna rotate around a lot with the camera just to make sure you're getting all the little things. Ooh. So it's not that this stuff matters, but I don't like the fact that there's like little grass blades in the, in the road. That probably wouldn't be a thing. So I will try to grab those and push them back in. And sometimes it's just a matter of rotating them around and trying to see what fits best. I think it's okay if there's a little bit of grass in between or even on some of the flagstone path. Okay, so that's pretty good for me. It's not that I want that area to feel super full. I just want it to look like the rest of the world and really blend in. It's a pretty big lot, so when you have just like open green, it just doesn't look very natural. And over in this corner, we're basically gonna do the exact same thing, so, uh, I'll catch you in a second. Okay, so as you can see, I've already put all of the rocks and flowers and everything out through here. I've even done a little fence like we did on the other side. So on this side, to just kind of make this worthwhile, I am going to put down this swing that we got with the like, I don't know, tiny camper something or another kit that I ended up buying because it's stupid swing, it's so cute the problem is is i don't know what these swatches are where like they all have a mat underneath except for the white one oh the brown one doesn't either okay good i like the brown one it's a little nicer than the black one but like i don't know why these all have little rugs underneath them i don't know why that would ever be a thing so okay good there are a couple swatches that don't have it Okay, so then I'm gonna create a little walking path from here. Oh, that was darker than I intended it to be. That's okay. We'll clean it up a little bit. And then we'll use this little cobblestone. So just like all the other stuff, this will just take a little finessing. I don't want it to seem so drastic like it does right now. Like we'll probably take the eraser tool over it and just kind of muddy it up a little bit. Before we do that, I'm going to take that dark muddy mud tool and on the lowest setting yep go right over the top so we'll take this and we'll just kind of muddy this up blur those lines a little better that kind of fits in with the grass a little more and then we'll take the eraser tool and mostly oh, mostly right on those edges and again you're just wanting to like slowly shave away go in small areas and that way if you kind of goof it's not that big of a deal so like this is still a little darker than i'd prefer and that is too and then we'll go back to the paint i'll choose a smaller brush this time it's probably most opaque like right in the center maybe okay and then we'll just take what this was and we'll fill that back in a little bit so that it's not you know kind of murky because the driveway is still going to be very opaque okay that seems kind of natural and then over here, I know I want to do something that kind of winds this way. Just not sure exactly what yet. 
My instinct is to say flagstone path. I just think that looks a little bit more nice, but it's more time consuming, but I'm probably gonna do it anyway. And I'm gonna wanna connect it over here. I know it's been a while since we worked on that side, but I'm gonna wanna connect it on that side. And then just how I did it before, I'm just gonna go back in and kind of clean this up. And then we'll pull in some of the smaller rocks and add those to this. And then we'll go from there. So I'm just coming around to this other side and trying to make sure that I'm filling everything in kind of equitably. You wouldn't want it to feel super full on one side of the path and then feel kind of really spaced out on the other side. So I find it best to just kind of do a back and forth. Okay, so I think that looks good. So now I'm just gonna roll some terrain paint underneath it and we will call it square. Okay, so this is where we are today. I think this looks pretty good. So we've clearly got the front of the build pretty well done. And then we will do the back of the build in the next video. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll have the next installment of this probably in a week or two. I really hope you're liking this. If you do, make sure to comment down below and like this video. Maybe subscribe, hang around, you know? I upload every Monday and Thursday. So I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.